I started uh, being interested in cars when I was in New York City. Uh, because I grew up in the 60s, uh, the late 60s, early 70s, I was old enough, I was like 10 years old, I was old enough to understand, you know, that these cars were out on the road now and they were beautiful cars, they were beautiful colors, really bright colors and the shapes were incredible. There was also a lot of racing that was going on at the time that um, I really enjoyed, you know, that whole Indianapolis, Johnny Lightning, um, Ferrari, you know, all the racing going on at Le Mans. Those kind of vehicles I thought were very beautiful and, you know, these were my toys and these were my posters all over, you know, all over my room. And I figured that I, in order to have one of these cars, I had to get involved with cars. And that was my focus and that was my goal. Uh, I went to CCS, which is, uh, it was known as Center for Creative Studies, and now it's called College for Creative Studies, but it's still CCS. I went there from 81 to 85. I graduated with a degree in uh, industrial design and like majoring in transportation design. I did an internship in France in 84 that was a lot of fun. I loved it. It was the first time I'd been in Europe and it was the first time I actually got to go to Le Mans and Brands Hatch. So I got to see my first Grand Prix real Grand Prix there, although they were having Grand Prix here in Detroit at that time, it was a great time for that. Then um, I designed a car over there, it was a, a Spider. that was a, a Renault Spider, and that car debuted in the Paris Auto Show in 86. So in 86 that was my first concept car. I had been doing so much design all the time throughout my career at Ford. I mean, I was doing furniture design, I was doing fashion design, I was doing a lot of painting, oil painting on canvas, these large commissions that are all around us. And that stuff was very important to me and I took it very seriously. And it was part of, you know, my overall, my job. So when I was done with Ford, all that work just kind of filled the filled the nine to five gap. I find that the best designers are artists. Uh, they have, they definitely have the ability to draw, but the, all the background that goes into design is the same background that goes into art. I mean, you still have to take the same classes that deal with graphics, proportion, 3D and 2D design, composition and color, all these elements. If you get those right in any direction that you're applying them to, whether it's a design of a car or a building or, a, or it's a painting, you get those elements involved correctly and well balanced and you will have a nice piece. So if I did run across a very, very good painter, I wouldn't doubt this guy could be a very good designer. These themes that, um, that I work with in my fashion. I do work with ideas that are gonna leave an, an impact. Um, definitely something you're gonna remember. And because of these themes that I use, they ask me to be first or last in fashion shows. I like being last. Last because that's like their little, you know, final hurrah or their, what do they call it at the end when they unveil all that, but anyways. Like the finale. Yeah, the finale, finale kind of theme stuff. There has to be like some kind of sense of humor to the items. For example, I did this fur coat. The fur coat, you know, is a, is a very simple kind of contemporary cut, but I made it look like it was made out of a skunk. Now that's the only animal that's going to escape, or at least one of the animals that, that escapes, you know, being shot and killed for its fur, which 
it would be it would be amazing if you could make a, a fur coat out of a skunk and who would buy it and who would wear it. But my approach on it almost looks kind of Warner Brothers. I mean, the girl's walking towards you in a black fur coat and when she turns around and she's going away, there's two big white stripes. Obviously, this wasn't an eight foot skunk, but you get the idea. Uh, one of my outfits is what I call She's a Star or the, or the Star Pants. And, and I put stars right where you think you would need them, you know, right where you would be trying to not get caught looking, you know. And then the funny part is the girl will approach you with like three stars, two, two on her booty, um, one on her on front in her little snatch and two stars on her on her boobies. And no matter what you say to this woman, you cannot tell her that you're not looking at the stars because you definitely are looking at the stars. This car was owned by Carol Shelby and he had lent it to Steve McQueen for from 63 to the spring of 64, thinking that if Steve McQueen had it long enough, uh, he would buy it. But Steve didn't want to buy it, so Carol took it back. And you can imagine, it must have been kind of a strange situation, because those two guys were probably pretty hard-headed. Um, but it's amazing to have a Steve McQueen vehicle here in my front room. It's gonna be a shame to see it go away. And I, I mean, I love this car. I want to have one of these cars. I did work on Cobras when I was at Ford. Uh, we had some great plans for taking this car into the future. And that's still something that has not been executed yet. It's just a fantastic piece of machinery. It is so honest. The, it's such the right size. I would really, really love to have one of these. I don't have a convertible right now, but I recommend that everybody has a convertible at some point, or you should always have a convertible in your small fleet of cars. I bought my first GT in 2005, and that was the first car I ever bought brand new out of a dealership. It's probably gonna be, it'll probably be a long time before I buy another new car out of a dealership, but, um, it was exciting, you know, go in, check out, you know, all the options or the boxes. The, the first GT I bought was actually the base, base car. It had no options. I couldn't really afford the car, and I had to <clears throat> put together and sell a lot of art to purchase the car. But I've had uh, different GTs since 2005. I buy them, I track them, and then I sell them to collectors. I started doing something I call the Signature Series, and we're gonna be working on Signature Car Number Five. This one in the, in the back is Signature Car Number Four. Um, and different, uh, different clients, you know, will send us their car and order uh, from like a menu of engine upgrades, and I'll come up with a whole new design, livery and color, graphics and numbers. So they definitely uh, will have a one-of-a-kind signed Ford GT. I mean, it's it's hard to out you know outrun or outdo the, the Ford GT. It you know it is a state-of-the-art supercar. It is built really really well. It's 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 reliable. It's, it, I mean, they went through all the uh, durability tests that almost a Ford pickup would have to go through. So that baby's bulletproof, and it's very, very fast. With small modifications, you know, it's still as fast as one of today's uh, Ferraris. So that car is definitely my favorite car. It's my best car. I've driven, I've put 80,000 miles on four GTs. I drive them to California. I've been doing that for the last three years. I've driven them down to Key West. I did that for about five years. So that car, I mean, I've driven all around the country in that vehicle and, you know, I, I, I love it. 
we got to do what we really wanted to do with a car when we designed that car. You know, it, it, you know, it's the package that we wanted. It's a two-seater mid-engine car. It's all aluminum. It's designed to perform to the maximum. It was designed to outperform Ferrari you know, for, for the year that it came out. I mean, what else can you ask for? In my artwork, most of it right now is all commission work. I have a long list of clients that are waiting for my paintings. Um, and they range from, you know, Ferraris to Ford GTs to Shelbys, you know, Mustangs. Uh, there's other exhibits, or there, there are exhibits that I do show at that give me the opportunity to do uh, figurative work. You know, so I could do the paintings of, you know, my models. And I really enjoy doing that. The paintings of the of the models and the paintings of like Formula One Ferraris, things like that. I usually do those for myself. It's hard to pick a favorite medium to work in uh, because because I like painting so much and I like designing cars so much, and I I, I really enjoy you know designing fashion. I would I would. I would say it'd be difficult to say that this is the one I'd want to stick with from now on. The, the cool thing about having all those different mediums is that when you're done, like after you do a fashion show, you don't really want to look at any more of that. You're maxed out. You have had fashion going hard, you know, late night and pushing yourself. After that show, you just want to put it down and, and go do some painting or, or design a car. And, but the same thing when you're getting ready to do a, uh, an exhibit of your paintings and you're trying to finish as many paintings as possible after that exhibit, you want to take a break.